From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. G'day there, I'm Graham, VK4 Baker Baker and this is the WIA National News for week commencing October 16, 2022. Jota weekend, and we welcome all the scouts and girl guides listening today via Jota setups. We'll hear from Australia's chief scout and also patron of the girl guides. A note in from WIA director Chris VK3FY, we're your service for we members, and hear from Peter VK4EA on behalf of the WIA board of directors. Hello, this is Peter VK4EA on behalf of the WIA board, Jota. 2022, Jamboree of the Air, is in full swing. The board is extremely grateful to those individuals and clubs that have helped their local scout and guide groups to enjoy our wonderful hobby. My local club, Redcliffe and Districts Radio Club, puts in a particularly big effort split across two locations, VP Park at Sanford, VK4SAA, and Murrabong, VK4SMB offering the ever-popular fox hunting in addition to DMR, D-Star, Echolink, IRLP and, of course, HF. All the best for your planned activities and let's hope there's a foundation licence or two coming in the future. I'm really looking forward to the Radio Electronics Association of Tasmania, REAST, Conference and Trading Day, the first weekend in November. Most of the board will be in Hobart before the conference and note we are paying our own way. We're getting together to finalise a long-term strategy for the Institute. Please keep an eye out for us at the conference. We're always happy to talk to amateurs how we can better serve the hobby. I'm looking forward to seeing the new IC905 from Icon. I'm saving my five cent pieces desperately because I think I want one of those things badly. Awesome work, Reist. Should be a fantastic weekend. I will also be attending the Gold Coast Ham Fest on the 13th of November in my capacity as a WIA director. Look out for me in the black WIA polo shirt. I'll have my flame suit ready. Hi. And finally, I wish to thank Peter Hannay, VK6HAX, for his excellent analysis of the WIA cybersecurity posture. This is part of the ongoing IT systems review, and we're very grateful for Peter's expertise. And cheers for now. This has been Peter, VK4EA, on behalf of the WIA Board of Directors. Thanks, Peter. Now, I received a note from Director Chris, VK3FY, asking we remind all members, if you're thinking of buying or selling amateur radio equipment, the WIA has a website for its members where you can safely add items for sale or buy. Now, the website is hamads.com.au. Yesterday, Saturday at 1pm local across Australia, the majority of the WIA news transmitting folk aired the opening address for Jota Jodi. Here now again an excerpt by both His Excellency General the Honourable David Hurley, ACDSC retired, Governor General of Australia and the Chief Scout of Australia, along with Her Excellency Mrs Linda Hurley, patron of Girl Guides Australia. Hello Scouts. Welcome to Jota Jotty 2022 the world's largest scouting event. What a weekend it promises to be. Plenty of fun activities and learning experiences shared amongst friends and all with an eye to creating a better world. Congratulations to the organisers for choosing a very timely theme. Together for a better world acknowledges the challenges the world has faced in recent years, but also encourages all of us to focus on what is important in life. Things like being kind to one another, being considerate and being prepared to put the interests of others before yourself. The four sustainable development goals that will inform this year's events are environment and sustainability, peace and community engagement, skills for life and health and wellbeing. All four goals are important, but I'm particularly pleased to see that peace and community engagement is a key element of the program. It's a reminder to all of us to strive to help make our communities stronger. David and I wish you well for the weekend and know it will be memorable. Enjoy Jota Jyoti 2022 and stay safe. There's one more thing we'd like to say. Go Go Scouts. Scouts!
across Australia from VK1 WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. Here in Campbelltown, it can be heard on a host of frequencies, including 6 meters, 52.525 FM, and on the dural repeaters, on the 2 meter repeater on 147.000, and the 70 centimeter repeater on 438. Decimal 525. I am Pete, VK2LP for the WIA National News Service. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, international news with Jason, VK2LAW. Hello. Leading this week's international news from Region 1, RSGB DX Trophies presented at their 2022 convention. Two prestigious trophies for achievement in the field of DX. Ian Justice, Mike Zero, Romeo November Hotel was awarded the Golf 5 Romeo Papa Shield for the greatest progress in DX made by an RSGB member resident in the UK during the year. Keith Evans, Golf 3 Victor Kilo Whiskey, won the Rotab Trophy for outstanding and consistent DX work. Congratulations to both of them. Now let's try and work them from the land down under. Sergei Krikalev, head of Russia's human spaceflight programs, told reporters that Roscosmos had started to discuss extending our participation in the ISS program with our government and hope to have permission to continue next year. With ties between Russia and the West rupturing over the war in Ukraine, Roscosmos chief Yuri Borisov had announced that Russia would leave the ISS after 2024 and would seek to build its own space station. He has not set a firm date for that plan. Turning to Region 2, teams at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida have conducted initial inspections to assess potential impacts from Hurricane Ian. There was no damage to the Artemis flight hardware and facilities are in good shape, with only minor water intrusion identified in a few locations. Next, engineers will extend access platforms around the Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft inside the Vehicle Assembly Building to prepare for additional inspections and start preparation for the next launch attempt, including retesting the flight termination system. As teams complete post-storm recovery operations, NASA has determined it will focus Artemis 1 launch, planning efforts on the launch period that opens November 12 and closes November 27. Over the coming days, managers will assess the scope of work to perform while in the VAB and identify a specific date for the next launch attempt. Focusing efforts on the November launch period allows time for employees at Kennedy to address the needs of their families and homes after the storm and for teams to identify additional checkouts needed before returning to the pad for launch. IEEE Award ARRL Electromagnetic Compatibility Committee member Gerald J. Ramey, Kilo India 6 Lima Golf Yankee received the Lawrence G. Cumming Award for Outstanding Service on August 4th, 2022. Presented by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE, EMC Society, the award recognised Gerald for promoting meaningful EMC immunity testing for utility control products over the last decade. To our own backyard in Region 3, new frontier in space weather forecasting opens in Australia. The Bureau of Meteorology's Australian Space Weather Forecasting Centre will develop 24-7 space weather forecasting and warning services to support Australia's space industry to understand, prepare for and respond to space weather events. Space weather affects communications, GPS, energy supply, aviation and other critical infrastructure. The Australian Space Weather Forecasting Centre is based in VK5, alongside 80 other space industry agencies and businesses. 
The Bureau collaborates closely with its industry and government partners to devise, refine and deliver real-time services to those who need it most. The Bureau's space weather forecasts, warnings and observations are available on its website, alongside its Earth-based products that Australians rely on every day. AMSAT India gives engineering students an intro to ham radio. Amateur radio was the big lesson of the day recently on one university campus in India. AMSAT India's regional coordinator, Rajesh Vagadia, Victor Uniform 2 Echo X-Ray Papa, in four hours took the 80 students from the Information and Communications Technology Department, along with a special team assigned to a student project, on a trip gaining insights into amateur radio as well as ham radio satellites. For that one special team of students, the timing couldn't have been better. The university recently announced that they will be building a satellite to be launched by the ISRO. The workshop provided some bonus preparatory work for them. The more terrestrial-minded demonstrations from digital modes and VHF-FM to SSTV were conducted with the help of Sakshi Vagadia, Victor Uniform 3, Echo X-Ray Papa, and Shyama Vagadia, Victor Uniform 3, Whiskey Hotel Golf, who was also part of the student satellite team. Workshops also covered such topics as the jargon of amateur radio, operating in the POTA and IOTA reward programs, high-altitude balloon tracking and, of course, CW. Just as every amateur contact on the air is usually followed up with a QSL of some sort, this workshop is not the end of the contact with the campus. Rajesh reported that the university administrators were so pleased that AMSAT India can expect to come back to conduct more programs. I'm away next week, so past WIA Director John VK4JJW will handle the job here at the International News Desk for the next broadcast. For VK1 WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason VK2LAW. Across Australia, from VK1 WIA, you're tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia National News Service from Wattle Park, Adelaide, South Australia. It can be heard on 1843 kHz in the 160 metre band at 9am Central Standard Time on Sunday mornings. I'm Colin, VK5XY, and you are welcome to join our callback after the broadcast. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4FUQ. Hello there. Now, contest wise 2022 WAG contest. This weekend, the worked all Germany contest runs from 1500 hours UTC Saturday until 1459 hours UTC on Sunday. CW and SSB on the 80 the 10 meter band contest segments. The exchange is signal report and serial number. German stations also send their DOK and identifier for their DARC districts. WIA VHF UHF Field Day, Spring, 0100 hours UTC Saturday 26 through 0059 hours UTC Sunday 27 November. 160 meter CW contest, AWL sponsored. Objective is for amateurs worldwide to exchange information with W stroke V amateurs on the 160 meter band and CW. Dates First four week in December, December 2 4, 2022. Contest period Begins 2200 hours UTC Friday, ends 1559 hours UTC Sunday. This is a 42-hour period with no time limitation. Logs are due within 7 days after the event is over. 10 meter contest, AWL sponsored. For amateurs worldwide to exchange QSO information with as many stations as possible on the 10 meter band. Dates. Second full week in December. Start 0000 hours UTC Saturday. Run through 23.59 hours CDC Sunday, December 10 and 11, 2022. Logs are due within seven days after the event is over. 
Dex Winter Celebrating 100 years of the BBC Over the year we've brought you updates and reminders of station GB100 BBC. It was back on the 18th of October 1922 that the Marconi Company and other equipment manufacturers formed the British Broadcasting Company, which became the British Broadcasting Corporation six years later. To mark this momentous date, exactly 100 years on, members of the BBC Amateur Radio Group have been invited by Arkiva to operate for the day at the Daventry Transmitting Station. That was home to so much of BBC Shore Broadcasting over the years. Members of the BBC and Arkiva clubs will be operating HF this Tuesday, 18 October, from the Empire Service Building at the Daventry site. As well as GB100 BBC, the call sign G2LO will be on the air. 2LO was a call sign allocated to the very first BBC transmitter, built by Marconi and located at Savoy Hill in London. Keep an eye on the GB100 BBC QRZ page for information. Not quite in the same class, yet but VK90 ABC is an Aussie station celebrating 90 years of the national broadcaster and is operating all year. Hadrian's Wall Special Event Station There are two special event stations, GB1900HA and GB1900HW, running throughout the year to commemorate 1900 years since the building of Hadrian's Wall. QSL via Logbook of the World and Club Log OQRS the year has been a good one for members of the Irish Radio Transmitter Society. Hams are still using the special call sign EI90IRTS to mark the 90th anniversary of the founding of Ireland's National Society. Listen for the EI90IRTS call sign. It ends at the end of December. QSL via EI6AL for VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4FUQ Enningham. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole VK3GTV. Hello, welcome to the segment. First up, it's Worldwide Special Interest Group News, Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. And how about a new one? BOTA, B-O-T-A. You've heard, of course, of the solar cycle, but what kind of hams concern themselves with the charitable cycle? Well, that would be members of my club, the Bendigo Amateur Radio and Electronics Club, and our pedal radio group. Throughout this month, October, these most mobile of the operators are in motion to meet the Great Cycle Challenge, which is raising money throughout Australia for research into childhood cancer. This is an event that the pedal radio group participates in each year. Group spokesman Graham Knight, VK3GRK, said, This is a great chance to get out, have fun, exercise and promote amateur radio. Riders pledge how many kilometres they'll ride and how many dollars they hope to raise. As Graham also notes, there's nothing to stop riders from carrying a handheld, safely of course, and making contacts along the way. He asks, could this be bikes on the air? Perhaps yes, but remember, it's kilometres that count most here, not contacts. Oh, and we'd like to thank Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT, for penning that story. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. Two more hams to be aboard for Starliner's maiden flight. Astronaut Scott Tingle, KG5NZA, will be its commander. And Mike Fink, KE5AIT of NASA, will serve as the Starliner's pilot. They will join Jeanette Epps, KF5QNU, who will be aboard as mission specialist. NASA assigned her in August 2020 to join the crew. There's no launch date yet for Starliner 1. 
It must complete NASA's Boeing crew flight test, which ensures the spacecraft can fly crewed missions to the ISS on a regular basis. This is part of NASA's commercial crew program. The first test flight is scheduled for early in 2023. Will SpaceX be able to save Hubble? At SpaceX's request, NASA and SpaceX have signed an unfunded Space Act agreement to cooperate on a six-month study of the feasibility for a Polaris program mission to boost Hubble's orbit. Without a boost, the thrusterless telescope is expected to re-enter and burn up around 2037. It's lost about 30 kilometres since the final shuttle visit 13 years ago. It seems Jared Isaacman's nascent commercial space program is looking for useful things to do, and this certainly qualifies. Their first mission, Polaris Dawn, is scheduled for March 2023 and includes plans for the first commercial spacewalk. If NASA decides to move forward with the reboost, other companies will also likely get to bid, perhaps unless Polaris decides to do it for free. NASA originally envisaged periodically boosting Hubble with an uncrewed orbital manoeuvring vehicle as an augment to the shuttle program. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Internet, the ham's domain. Internet Archive looking for amateur radio material. Thanks to funding from the ARDC Foundation, the Internet Archive is building an online digital library of amateur radio and communications and are asking amateurs for material, such as the obscure stuff, the locally produced ham radio newsletters, or the smaller magazines, that sort of thing, according to the archivist. The Internet Archive has begun gathering content for the Digital Library of Amateur Radio and Communications, the acronym DLARC, which will be a massive online library of materials and collections related to amateur radio and early digital communications, a digital library that documents, preserves, and provides open access to the history of our community. The library will be a free online resource that combines archived digitized print materials, born digital content, websites, oral histories, personal collections, and other related records and publications. The goals of the DLARC are to document the history of amateur radio and to provide freely available educational resources for researchers, students, and the general public. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Military. We've often made mention of the Military Affiliate Club in the US, the American Legion Amateur Radio Club, akin to, say, the RSL here in Australia having a ham club. Well, that club is no longer operating as a national program, this due mainly to a lack of licensed ham radio operators on staff. Legion ham radio clubs and programs, meanwhile, will continue to operate at the local level. Telarc was created by resolution in 2011, and the club grew to become one of the largest in the nation. American Legion National Headquarters encourages continuation of ham radio programs at the local level but will no longer process memberships, manage the Telarc website or produce other promotional materials to operators. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Radio Scouting Pete, VK5DMR slash 5NBL, spoke last week of the DMR network and his net. This week, Alec, VK2APC, joins us with a look at DMR and Jota. Jamboree on the air is here again. This is the 65th year that scouts and girl guides have used the medium of amateur radio to meet with each other from anywhere around the country or even around the world. In recent times, the VK Digital Radio Network, or DMR, has been used for Jamboree on the air with great success providing access to 60 repeaters Australia-wide. The VK DMR network can also be accessed using a small local hotspot or by using the Droid Star application on a smart device. Additional talk groups have been made available for Jamboree on-the-air contacts over this weekend, 14th to 16th October. Talk Group 30 should be used as the call channel to establish a contact with another Jamboree on the air radio station, then change to one of the other free talk groups in the range TG31 to GG39. It is useful to monitor the DMR dashboard to check which talk groups are not being used and might be available for your Jamboree contact. 
Links to the DMR dashboard can be found by entering VKDMR into your search engine, then scroll to the bottom of the homepage. For more contact options on other bands including HF, please go to vkjodajody.com website. We wish everyone a successful jamboree on the air this weekend. For VK1 WIA National News, I am Alec, VK2 APC in Sydney. Now back over to you, Cole. Thanks, Alec. And keep an ear out for all those Joda stations on air over this weekend. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Rescue Radio. Dale Clolan, a firefighter at Baltimore Washington International Airport in the USA, was off duty and busy running errands when he stumbled across a chance to save lives. Clonan, 46, lives in Hampstead, Maryland. As an amateur ham radio operator with an interest in any news or weather event, he was keeping an eye and ear on Hurricane Ian. Of course, the hurricane was pretty big news. Clonan told Fox News Digital in a phone interview, Thinking about family members who live outside Sarasota, Florida, Clonan and his wife were pretty concerned about the storm, he said. They have loved ones maybe in harm's way. Clodden made contact with Annette. They asked for better ideas of where they are and said, Hey, I have someone here in Maryland, and they're receiving messages from their loved ones on Sanibel Island. The island is destroyed, their house is battered, and it's flooding. They may need possible rescue, Clodden continued. So again, it was ham radio to the rescue. And that's it for the segment this week. Till next time, stay safe. I'm Cole, VK3GTV. Across Australia from VK1WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. Across Northern VK7, it can be heard on repeaters VK7s, RAA, RAC, RAL and RWC. At 9am local time on Sundays and Tuesdays at 8pm. I'm Peter, VK7PD. 2022 social scene. In the West, the VK6 folk are getting together for Perth Tech, October 21 to 23. That, of course, is next weekend. In VK7, November 5 and 6, the Tassie Ham Radio Conference and Expo. Also the same date... Gladstone in Queensland, Tannum Sands Gathering, put on by the Gladstone Amateur Radio Club. VK4's Gold Coast Ham Fest, November 13 at Country Paradise Parklands. And Rosebud Radio Fest, November 29, 30am in VK3. 2023, VK3, the Barg Ham Fest, that's the 5th of February at the Barg Club Rooms. And Alaramit 2023, happens the 4th to the 5th of November in Hobart. You've got, oh, I'd say about 13 months to plan for that one. Now, till next we meet, again, farewell to all the girl guides and the scouts listening this morning. I'm Graham VK4BB. Walk softly. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions www.wia.org.au From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.